in today's video, we'll be discussing the best and worst decks for cruise ship cabins. Choosing the right deck can make or break your cruise experience. And with so many options available, it can be really hard to pick the right one. But don't worry, as always, I'm here to help. In this video, we'll take a closer look at the decks on cruise ships, highlighting the best ones and the ones that you'll probably want to avoid. Avoiding seasickness is often the main concern when it comes to choosing a good deck on a cruise ship. And it's true that some decks are much better than others for people who suffer from motion sickness. However, there are some other things that you'll want to consider too, such as the view from your balcony, how many stairs you'll have to climb, and whether it's going to be noisy in the night. Now, before we start, it's important to understand how the decks are numbered on a cruise ship. Decks are numbered from the bottom to the top, usually starting at one and sometimes going as high as deck 20 or even more. But not all cruise ships number their decks in the same way. On some ships, you can have cabins on deck one, but on other ships, the lowest deck that you can stay on is deck five. And to further confuse things, on some ships, the decks have names instead of numbers and sometimes they have letters. On P&O Ventura, for example, deck 12 is called A deck, deck 11 is called B deck, but there are 17 decks. An E deck isn't next to F deck, but they do all have numbers as well, so let's just use those. However they're numbered, almost all cruise ships have a similar layout when it comes to cabins. At the bottom of the ship is the engine, the crew cabins, the laundry room, the medical center, and some other facilities that guests can't access. Above that, there are some cabins, and then above that, you've got the indoor areas with bars, restaurants, and the theater. Next, as we move up the ship, you'll have several more decks of cabins. And then at the top are the outdoor areas. The swimming pools are here, and you'll usually find the buffet as well. So now we know how the cruise ship decks work. Let's answer the question that I get asked the most. Which deck is the best for seating? If you suffer from seasickness at all, or you're worried that you might, then choosing the right deck can make a massive difference. As a cruise ship rocks in rough seas, the top of the ship moves much more than the bottom. So you might think that the bottom deck is the best, but you should remember that the lowest decks don't have balconies. And if you do feel sick, you'll probably want to sit outside in the fresh air and look at the horizon. For many people who get seasick, the best one is the lowest deck that has a balcony. But if you don't have the budget for a balcony, a low deck with a window can be a great option too. Now, what about the best deck for views? If you're cruising somewhere scenic like Norway, the best deck is probably one that's higher up as you'll have a much better view from up there. Of course, you can always just go to the public areas and enjoy the view from there too. Which brings me on to the next question, which is do you prefer to take the lift or the stairs on a cruise? Sometimes I'll walk up about 15 decks of stairs on a cruise ship and I always regret my decision after about 10 decks. So if you're the type of person who doesn't like taking lifts and prefers the stairs, then the best deck for you is one that's located halfway between the outdoor areas at the top and the bars and restaurants at the bottom. That's usually around deck nine or 10, depending on the ship. That way you'll only have to go three or four decks in either direction to get to where you want to be. So what's the best deck on a cruise ship? Well, of course, like many things, that depends. Choose the top for the best views, the bottom to avoid feeling seasick, and somewhere in the middle if you want to be close to everything. But when it comes to the worst deck, well, there are a few decks that you'll definitely want to steer clear of. The deck below the pool deck is considered to be the worst deck of all. Why? Well, it's also the noisiest. Some ships have deck parties that go on late into the night, so you'll probably be able to hear the music from your room if you go to bed before this finishes. And then early in the morning, you're going to hear the sun loungers being dragged across the deck, which is essentially your bedroom ceiling. Right below the buffet is also a bad location for cruise ship cabins for the same reason. Breakfast on a cruise ship can start as early as 6am and you really don't want to be woken up at that time by the sound of scraping chairs. Some cruisers have even described the sound of the buffet car as being like a train overhead. Another noisy location on a cruise ship is the lowest deck. Here you might be able to hear the sounds of the engine and you might be woken early in the morning by the sound of the anchor chain clanging. Cruise ship engines aren't just noisy, they also vibrate. And that vibration can make the coat hangers in your wardrobe rattle. Now this next point only applies to some ships, but if your ship has a promenade deck, 
then you're definitely going to want to avoid choosing a cabin there. The problem with cabins on the promenade deck is that people can walk past and see straight into your room. On p and Cruises ships Iona and Avia, the promenade deck even has hot tubs on it. This means that some cabins will have a jacuzzi blocking their view of the ocean. Some promenade deck cabins have windows rather than a balcony. These have special one-way glass that looks like a mirror from the outside, but it still feels weird getting changed in one of these rooms. And if someone puts the face up to the glass, they can definitely see right in. On many ships, the promenade is inside. And sometimes cabins on the deck above the promenade have windows that look down into the promenade area. This can be a noisy location, especially if your room's right above a bar. But the main problem here is that people can look up and see right into your room. All cruise ships have slightly different layouts. So when it comes to choosing the best deck for your room, you really do need to study the deck plan. Ideally, you want to choose a deck that has cabins above and below it. So now you know which are the best decks and which to avoid, but there's one more thing you need to know. If having a good room is important to you, you want to make sure that you actually do get the room that you choose. Most cruise lines offer guarantee cabins for lower price. This means that they choose your cabin for you. So you get whatever rooms are left after people have taken their pick of the best ones. It does generally cost more though to choose your own cabin. So about half of the time I'll choose my own cabin and half of the time I'll let the cruise line decide for me. It really depends on the price and how much I'm bothered about which room I get. Even if you do pay extra though and choose your own cabin number, you might not actually end up in that cabin. That's because cruise lines sometimes decide to surprise people with free upgrades. Sounds good. And usually an upgrade is a good thing, but not always. You could be moved from your desired ocean view room on a low deck right up to below the pool with a balcony. Up there, it might be really noisy and you might feel the motion a lot more. You can say no to upgrades, but only at the time of booking. If you book online, there's a box that you can tick. Otherwise, ask your travel agents to do that for you. If you wait until after you've been upgraded, it's usually too late to say no and you won't be able to get your original room back. If you found this information helpful, please do consider subscribing to the channel so I can help you out with more cruise tips in the future. This is a new channel and if I'm able to reach a thousand subscribers, I'll be able to get paid to make these videos and that'll make it a lot easier for me to make more for you.